we pretty much have the model set up most of the way for what we are going to be doing to it. We're going to be folding it in half. But first, before we fold it in half, we're going to put the textures on it. Now, this is where you could do things a little differently. Some may tell you that to texture, such as this, you're going to need to unwrap the entire UVs and create one massive texture. That can be a little time consuming, and if you don't understand UVs, you may not really understand what needs to be made here. But the method I'm going to show you, you don't have to deal too much with uh, the UV mapping process. You can just project some textures directly onto surfaces and that will accomplish what you need to accomplish for visualizing these products. So we're going to go into our materials section. So up here you'll have a button called the material editor. You can also press the M hotkey. But when you open it up you will see the slate material editor. Now let's make it a little bigger. Now from here we're going to be making a material that we're going to put onto this piece of 3D geometry. Now as if you haven't seen this material editor before, uh, it's uh, it can be a little confusing, but to the left we have all the materials that we have access to. In the middle we have the view where we're going to be connecting materials and modifiers to those materials together, and to the right we're going to have some detail panels. So let's start by looking for a material. We're going to be using the Arnold renderer. So here inside of our materials browser, we're going to go into the Arnold section and we're going to grab a standard surface. Take the standard surface, drop it into the center, and there is our first material. Now it's pretty intimidating to see all of these options. So how about don't take those into account just yet. Let's start by going into the details panel here and we're going to label this material as the Dryad card material. I like to use um, little shortenings of words such as material, geometry into my naming conventions so and they don't have to necessarily be all caps either so MTL material. Wonderful. Here in our material, you can see a small preview of what that material might look like. It's a pretty simple shader, white with some specular. And from there, we can change this color in this base color. This is really all we're going to be working with for right now. Don't worry about anything else. We can change this color to whatever we'd like. And you can see the preview gets updated. Now, why don't we apply this directly to the shader? so that you can see how it looks as we're updating the shader. So if you have your geometry selected and you have your shader selected, you can right click, assign material to selection. Boom. Now let's rotate the camera so we get a little less specular. And you can see our geometry is red now, following whatever the material is going on here. Uh, we don't want a red material. We want our image to be put onto the base color. Now don't use this value, use this value over here, which is base underscore color and not just base. And there's many ways to do this. You can connect off of the base color by holding on to this little node here and dragging out to create something that gets connected to it. Or you can, in your material, select this little box here to pick a map. Now, we can do it this way and you'll see how it all fits together. We'll click this, another browser will open up and we can see the options that we have. We're looking for the bitmap node. It's going to open up a, another window for you to find the map that you'd like to use. So it's gonna automatically drop us into our project folder, scene assets, images. So you could put all of your assets here if you'd like so that the project 3ds max can refer to goes back to this this particular folder but our, our files aren't here so we're going to go out and into the tos assets folder and we're going to pick the dryad file i'm just going to import it now as you can see the base color gets connected to a bitmap now there's also another way to do this if we wanted to we can delete these break that connection 
And by doing that, all you do is select it and you press delete and you can delete that connection. You can drag the same thing from base color going into general and find that bitmap again and picking that same file. Excellent. So now you can see the file is connected to base color. The example, the sample of the material is updated and the geometry that this is being projected on is updated as well. Now all of that works together perfectly well. Uh, and the file fits perfectly as we've made the geometry in the same proportions as the file itself. Well, that 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 just works out perfectly for us. If it were a different size, you would see stretching and whatnot. Now we're going to solve this with a modifier rather than unwrapping the entire piece of 3D into a flat map. We move a little qu more quickly when we do something like this, or at least I do. So we're going to solve this with a modifier. Go into your modifier list and look for the UVW map modifier. Now when you put this on, nothing will really change. It's The modifier is really just fitting to the standard projection onto this 3D asset. The mapping is going to be planar. Now if you think of if you think of how a texture is being projected onto a surface, planar is the way that it's going to be projected and that might be easier to see that if you go into your UV map modifier, select this gizmo, you can lift this project this uh, this little box that represents the projected map onto the geometry. You can imagine that this is the shape of your file itself and it's being projected down onto the geometry. Now you can go into the rotate tool or E and you can rotate this as well. Now if you like me, like to have your angles snap to particular values, you can turn your angle snap on and you can get to a perfect 90 degree angle, which you can also see down here as you're making these adjustments. You can also just straight up put in 90 to turn it this way. Some of you may have geometry that actually is pointing this way and making and you may have a dryad card that needs a little bit of manipulation here, but this is how you would turn this texture around. Now, planar is not the right one because if you think of it projecting down onto this piece of geometry, it's pretty much going to be a mirror. So we're going to change this from planar to box. Now box creates a box. Now it doesn't look like it's done anything here, but if you look closely, you can see that it takes the same dimensions as the piece of geometry itself. And when you look underneath, it's the right way. It's no longer mirrored. Now we can take this height just so you can see how this projection map works. It is projecting this texture from the top in this proportion, from the bottom in this proportion, and also all around the sides in these proportions. If you if we were to look closely, we could see that this texture would be stretched, but it's far too thin for us right now. So let's undo that and keep it where it is. We can also drop this down, set it back to the geometry. So you have a better understanding of how this UV map modifier works. This is not what we want on the other side. And rather than trying to make one texture that can accomplish all the sides of this Piece, we're going to just project another texture onto this backside. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to go back into our materials panel, our material editor, and we're going to make another material. And before we do that, uh, this takes up a lot of space and there's a lot of visual clutter for something that's so simple. So you can select and right click and go down to hide all unused node slots. So that way, keeps things a little more neat for you. And I'm a big proponent of neat files and organization. Now, let's make another one. Standard surface, drop it here. Oh, and we have very large um, uh, node again. And from here, we're gonna do the same thing. We're going to label it, dryad, dryad card back material. And we're going to connect another map. 
go to bitmap. We're going to get the back texture. Once again, it connects automatically to the base color, which is the map that we chose. And we're going to right click and we're going to hide these unused node slots. So we have another material made for the back. We're also going to make another material for the very thin edges of this card, which is going to be white. When you cut into a piece of paper, the inner, very thin inner plane is going to be white itself, which you could see if you look at this card closely. You can sort of, you can sort of tell there's that white edge to it. Now, we'll keep it the standard material, the default uh, color here. It's a good enough color for what we need, and we're once again going to just label it. This one is going to be Dryad Card White. Don't forget MTL. And we're going to hide all the unused node slots. Now, how are we going to combine all of these together? Because if you try to assign, maybe go to the back and think, if I have this selected, let's get out of our gizmo and go back into our selection. You'll see that if you did try to assign this material to the selection, hey, that works out perfectly, but the front is gone. Now, this is going to be accomplished by creating a multi-material or a multi-sub-object material. If you scroll up into the materials in the general tab, you're going to find this multi-sub-object and we're going to create one. This essentially is a shader that is multiple different shaders put together that can be assigned to particular IDs that are on a model. Uh, this can be a very quick way to just quickly texture and material particular parts of your model um, to save you some time for something as simple as a static piece of geometry that's going to be rendered. It'll just another way for you to, to materialize things. Uh, and it's, it's a little simpler than trying to unwrap a UV, a UV map, which is the mapping of all the planes that are in this geometry. Now, from here, we're going to go into our multi-sub-object parameters and we're going to set the number of materials that are going to be used to three. So now that we have our material sub-object created, let's give it the name. This is going to be the Dryad Card Multi Material. Now that we have the three, no, the three slots created, let's connect these slots together by taking this output node. As you can see, these nodes have input nodes and then they have output nodes. We're gonna connect these output nodes together. You can also drag it from either direction. So one, material two, and material three. And you can see by the update, it has a little bit of a sample. You can see the kind of split of all three different materials. So from here, if we applied this material to the geometry, assign material to selection, it looks like, hey, we have the Dryad card here, but still, it's, it's uh, the Dryad back is not present, which probably means that the side is also not going to be present. Now, to fix that, we have to assign the material ID number to the particular faces of this geometry. We only want these two top rectangles to have the dryad, these two bottom rectangles to have the back texture, and all the other textures around the side to have the white core texture, the white paper texture. So dryad is already set up. Uh, we're going to go back into modifying this piece of geometry uh, by using another edit poly. And with that, we, can, we could create a new edit poly to do this, to make this, um, to start assigning these material IDs to specific polygons. You could go back and do it here in this edit poly, but to pace everything out so that you have a modifier for a particular purpose, you could just add on top of it. It's not a complicated model, so you can get away with something so, something so thorough. Uh, with this edit poly, you can scroll down and um, we're going to select the polygons that we want to take particular materials. So select the polygon. Let's start by looking at these two. 
these two are already at the materials that we want. So let's select both by clicking one and holding control and clicking the other. And if we scroll down into the edit geometry, or not in edit geometry, the polygon material IDs, we can see that the ID is set to one already, which one is our dryad card material. Now let's go in the back and let's select these two and we'll set this ID to the dryad card back material, which is two. So here we'll set it to two and press enter and we have the texture, the correct texture put onto the correct piece of geometry. Now to assign the paper material, the white material, to the edges here, we're going to need to select the other edges that are not these. So what we can do is, if it's too difficult, make sure you get to select, make sure you select, give yourself the most space to see these things, but you can select one, you can hold control, and you double click the continuous polygons that are connected that go around the edge. Now all that was was selecting one polygon of this continuous line of polygons and hold down control and double click and it will automatically select these all for you. Now with these selected, let's set that ID to three. Now what we can do to check, we can manipulate this geometry by selecting, going back into our edit poly going to the polygon selection and we're going to select both of these and we're going to pull it up and we'll see that that's true. The sides have been made white. Great. Let's undo that. So now we have the card properly textured in 3D space.